Welcome to the Good Form Preview of the Bendigo Pacing Cup. It's on a Friday night, which is mm. terrific. Hopefully all the uh, pundits can get down there. I know I'll be there. We'd better go through the quaddy legs to try and find a winner or two at Lord's Raceway. First leg of the quad is the, not Jamie Lee King, but the J.L. King and Co. Pace. Um, looks a three-horse race to mine. Sapphire Stride looks your natural leader. Brullo's pass might be the class commodity. Huge run behind Lazarus and the four-year-old Bonanza. And our Stardust just a bit awkwardly drawn. What are your thoughts, Bakes? Uh, I'm very keen on Brullo's pass. I think he's the best horse in the race. He's a four-year-old now. Uh, he didn't obviously quite make the chariots field, but he wasn't far off it either. And uh, look, I, I agree there's probably two key ones with our Stardust and Sapphire Swipe, but if you're playing wider, four needed and times a bonus can go into your first fours, I think. But uh, if we're talking quaddies alone, I think Brello's Pass is nearly a one-out job. The Sapphire Stride there, I think. Yeah, you can. yeah, yeah the Bre Brello's Pass probably has to park outside. Yeah, I'd Sapphire say so. Stride. It's too, too strong for And you're happy enough that if it can sit park and just drill it into submission? Will do. All good. Yeah. Second leg of the quaddie is one of the big features. It's a square gating feature on the program, the Elder Baron Park, Mori Mole, and it features the defending champion and last start. Group, uh, great Southern Star winner, Glen Ferry Typhoon. Uh, career best performance last time. It arguably was the second best performance, I think, of his career in this race last year. They yeah. ran off the arm in 26.3 and he held his rivals in a 54 mile. You had question marks over that time, didn't you? Uh, I think you were saying that first quarter couldn't be. Hard right. to believe that the Trotters could go 26.3 off the arm. They did burn for a long time. I'm not a human timepiece, so I don't know what they ran, but certainly they did go. Maori Tom, of course, was attacking yes, on that occasion, yes. and that's why we came up with our theory for last week, but we won't um, hark on about that. Let's stick to the Maori Mole for this week. Glen for Typhoon. Uh, looks the likely leader. Gets across easy, do you think? And are we of the same belief that if it's in the same sort of form it was in a couple of weeks ago, how do they beat it? That's the key. And uh, look, if he's, if he's at the same sort of form, he will cross... Savannah JJ pretty quickly. Sonny Ruby won't be going anywhere near crossing him. I wouldn't have thought, nor will any of the others. Even KD Muscles at her quickest, I'm not sure, could cross him if, you know, Maori Time and Cardigan Boko can't cross him in a Great Southern Star. Yep. So, uh, look, if he is at his best, yes, he just wins. There's probably always that little risk factor given how he was going before the Great Southern Star. But um, to my eye, you, you have to split it on two levels and say in your main quarter, he is one out. And who's in your saver? Because, uh, look, on, on the form from the major races, the Dullard Cup and the Great Southern Star, you have to give a huge amount of respect to Sunny Ruby. And she has got the gates to yep. put herself in some sort of right spot. I think Anthony Butt will suit the horse as well. Um, Prince Fearless, it probably hurts him the fact that Super has been yeah. scratched from the race because he's probably going to have to sit poles early at least now. Yep. So Sunny Ruby and who else do we have to include in that saver court? It's funny, he's third favourite in the race and he's almost the one out of the rest. Maybe Uncas and Daryl Boko you could leave aside, but... I'd nearly play all of them in your saver quarter. I think okay. on their day, Savannah JJ from behind the leader, El Parco's going really well. Uh, they're in, all of them, you know, have the ability to win on their day. Uncas eighty one dollars. I know. It, we'll throw him in there. Everything doesn't the suit mile bad draw, but gee, he was good in the terrain cup. Yeah. Sure Helios is underrated. Yeah. Go. Uh, third leg of the quarter looks a little bit simpler. Well, Glenfrey Typhoon, we've got one out, but you know, you can spread the net there. Here, yeah. I think you can really narrow things down. Four medalists has been terrific. First up from a break, was able to beat Petacular, who was really impressive at her following start. Is of course, a quality filly. The Defiant, Josh Hagen told me he d just didn't want to score up yeah. in the Victoria Derby final. We know how good a horse he is on his day. Is it a racing two? It has to be. It has to be. Four medalist was, as you say, so good at Ballarat, beating Petacular first up from a break. I know she too was first up, and he had the pegs, but it was a big, big win. So... He is the top tip for me, but I would be playing the Defiant in the same quaddy. We know how quick he is off the gate at his best. Uh, he was so good in the Victoria Derby heat. So uh, racing two, I agree, and um, I probably wouldn't be splitting them for quaddies. Play them in the same one. All done. It was good last start. General Joy, they're not really winning too, hopes, though. Too hard from the back row. Yeah. Yep. And the final league of the quaddies is a big one. It's the Group 2 Pet Stock 2017 Bendigo Pacing Cup. And... An amazingly open field. This I personally thought it was four fifty-five bucks the field. The tab have got a different feeling about it. Two dollars eighty. I think it is a slight drift after opening two sixty. Favorite two ninety. Yeah. Favorite, yep. favorite uh, Maxi Man. Guaranteed the most interesting runner without any question at all. But Messini, um, you know Adam Cartwright, Flaming Flutter. Everywhere you look, there's some sort of each way potential. What have you settled on? Yeah, it's, it is that sort of race to me. I'm happy to have a quite a good bet each way on Adam Cartwright. I know. He's been sneaking peg runs in good races, but I think he is going really that well. So uh, mm. if they go quickly early, I'm sure that he'll be humming home laid out wide if he gets a card in. So certainly he's the each way bet in the race for me, but I don't think I'm causing terrors out of it at $9 if he lobs behind Stunning Grin, who should hold the lead. Uh, he's certainly going to be right in the race. Guaranteed to say Messini, Maxi Man, 
Um, you know, my Kiwi mate, I wouldn't be giving up on him either. It's a, it's a really tough race. Just quickly, a bit of a roller coaster with Adam Cutright. I think he might have opened 12 out to 18 or 19, back into 15. Would yeah. you suggest punters take the 15 now, or they say he's such a disrespected horse and, and lowly assessed that he might get out to nah. 20 bucks plus? No, nah, he'll start $9. <laughs> he'll start so $9. Take, take the 15, take the, 15. the take-home yeah. message. Have you got a best bit in the program for us, just quickly? Adam Cut, cut right each way, each way. I'm quite confident. All right, Baker's tips will be up for the quaddy at the end of this video, and hopefully, if you're near the central gold field, you can get out to the Bendigo Pacing Cup tonight and say good day to me. If not, sit at home, watch Sky, good luck, and good punting. <laughs>